Hey, let's do the Q&A today. It is Thursday, not Friday. If you see me say, hey, baby. <laughs> what is wrong with me? All right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I am at, what is that in the background? <laughs> All right, hey guys, welcome back. So today I am answering a lot of questions. So two days ago, I posted on my Instagram story, pause if you're not following me on my new Instagram, let's do that now, Jules underscore Albino. I know a lot of my subscribers, when they do find me, they're like, what happened to your old Instagram? It was hacked, I had to start over. So that's the answer to that. But yeah, two days ago, I posted on my story, that I was gonna shoot a Q&A video soon. If you had any questions, ask me. And the girlies came through with the questions. Let me show you, like, so many questions. Can you even see that? I doubt it with the um, sun. But yeah, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of questions. So, yeah, I'm not gonna make a long intro. We are going to get right into the questions. It was a lot of questions, so I don't think I can get through all of them, but I'm gonna scroll and just pick random ones to start answering. There were a lot of repeated questions as well, so I'm gonna try to answer that. So, what's the next city you're living in? I don't know, but I really, really, really want to go to West Africa by the end of the year, so I am trying to make that happen now. If everything goes well, let's just say somewhere in West Africa, probably between Accra and Lagos. Those are definitely on my agenda, seriously. <laughs> so my brother asks, who's your favorite sibling? I only have one sibling, my younger brother. Shout out to Manny, love you. Someone asks, what areas are best to stay in Johannesburg? So I've only stayed in Rosebank and in Santon. I enjoy both of those areas, so I would, I would recommend those areas, but Johannesburg is very, very big. I'm realizing that. So there are so many different areas, so many different vibes. It really depends on the vibe you're looking for, you know? But I will say, if you like, like, you know, like luxury upscale, you know, like real bougie, suburban type feel, uh, Santin or Rosebank. Okay, so there are a lot of questions about why did I leave Kenya? Um, but it seems like the tone of it is just like, what happened in Kenya. And guys, nothing, nothing happened in Kenya. Um, I had a great time. I was there for two months. I never intended on staying there forever. <laughs> I feel like most people go on vacation for a week or two. I stayed for two months. I went there because it was also my birthday month and I didn't want to be in the US for my birthday. That's just like my thing. If I can control it, I don't like spending my birthday in the United States. So I wanted to go to Kenya. I hear, I heard Nairobi was like great for partying. So, I mean, guys, that's why I went. I had a good time, like nothing against Kenya. I feel like maybe I left kind of just like abruptly, but no, like nothing happened. I'm just one of those people like I work off my feelings. So at that point I had been there for like six weeks. So I'm like, okay, I got the vibe, had a great time. I'm just ready for a different scenery. So that's why I left. But would I ever go back? Absolutely. I wanna go back very soon. I had a good time in Kenya. I met some cool people. Um, the Kenyan men, oh, that's a whole nother video, but I had a good time. Someone asked, would I ever go back? Absolutely. Someone asked, what's been the biggest cultural shock to you in South Africa? Ooh, I would have to say, guys, it is the, the mental struggle I go with with my identity here. This is my, what, third time in South Africa, so I've gotten used to it, but it still just blows my mind. I remember a couple weeks ago, I went on a date with a Nigerian guy. <laughs> and we went on a date, you know, we were like sitting down at the table waiting for like the waiter to come over to take our order. And he just says to me like, oh, I'm not into colored guys. And it just went over my head. I was like, okay, cool, okay, great, good for you, like whatever, it just, it didn't click. And he like stopped and started staring at me and he's like, no, I'm not into colored guys. And I'm like, okay, so, so what? Like, why are you telling me this? And he's like, you're colored. And I'm like, what? Like, no, like what? He's like, no, like he's like, you're clearly colored. He's like, I prefer black men. And I'm <laughs> like, wait, what do you mean? I was like, I'm black. And he's like, no, you're not black. So we asked the waiter, she comes to the table and I'm like, ma'am, can we ask you a question? It's totally unrelated to food, but we just want to ask you a question to get another opinion. 
And so he asks her, he's like, so when you look at him, do you see a black man or a colored man? And she's like, oh, he's colored. And I'm like, what? So, like, my mind was so blown. And even before coming, I knew, like, you know, color, colored people here are a race. I get that totally, understand that, respect it. It just didn't click to me before coming that I would be considered colored. Like, that blew my mind. Like, it really, it still blows my mind sometimes. And I'll have colored people uh, just speaking Afrikaans to me, and they're like, you're not colored? And honestly, I just never know how to answer now. I'm like, I wanted, like, naturally, I wanna say no. But I'm just like, I don't even know what to say. Uh, I've been in so many different scenarios where I had to question my own race. You know, coming from the US, I've always been taught, or they have like always taught us, like if you have one ounce of black in you, you are considered black. So my entire life, we're just like black, black, blackity, black, 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 black. And then coming here, and people are like, oh no, you're not black, you're color. And it's like, my mind is blown. I mean, I don't mind it, but it's just like, wow. It just makes me realize like even the word black has different meanings depending on where you're at. Like that's so crazy. I think for traveling, that has been one of the like biggest like shocks. I think that has been one of the biggest things that have opened my eyes since traveling. Like the word and meaning of black in the US is not the same everywhere. Like that's so, that is so interesting to me. And I just feel like if a lot of black Americans come here, you know, we're just like, oh, we're black, we're black, black lives matter. I feel like a lot of people will come to South Africa and just have like their whole head spin around when they realize like here, you're not considered black. So that's been a culture shock. It's not a bad thing. It's just, it's just a thing. It's just very interesting to me. What's your favorite place to visit so far in South Africa? Whew, that's a tough one. That is really a tough one because I genuinely, I love Johannesburg and I love Cape Town. I don't know, I really love Johannesburg and I love Cape Town. Like, you know, it just depends on the time of year, the mood I'm in, the vibe. Like, they're just great. They're great for different reasons. So it's a tie, honestly. Someone asks, how and why did you get those gorgeous tattoos and have you met someone special yet? Um, so I guess she's talking about like this tattoo, guys. And then I also have this tattoo here. Um, but honestly, this one here, <laughs> I wish I had a better story, but I was honestly, I wanted a tattoo just to be like a rebel. So I went on Google. I remember I was at work. I was living in Florida at the time. I got this maybe like six years ago. All right, someone said, can we get the Rwanda story time? Um, I actually, I made a video about that. I posted that in April or May. Um, yeah, I explained the whole incident that happened, but I ended up making the video private because I just, I don't know. I didn't want people to feel like sorry or like sympathetic for me. Cause I posted the video, I believe in May, but the incident happened in November of last year. So I had a lot of time to heal. Like I was, I was over that, but you know, I felt like when I put that video out, people were just making it a bigger issue than what I actually thought it was. So I made it private. I didn't want to talk about it no more. I didn't want it out there in the world. So I made it private. So will I talk about that story again? Probably not. Yeah, but would I ever visit Rwanda again? Absolutely. I just learned my lesson. Like, I, I won't go to the hood. You know, I'm just not going to go to the hood. I'm not going to go to dangerous areas. Someone asked, how do you feel about Kenya after that article? <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw it. I put it on my Instagram as well. If you're not following me on Instagram, you're really missing out. But um, yeah, someone sent to me on Instagram this article that this, I guess, popular um, blog wrote in Kenya. So the article that they wrote was basically about my monthly expenses that I spent for the month in Kenya. I made a video about that. So they pretty much just like rephrased everything I said in the video which was cool, I didn't mind that part. The part that annoyed me was the title of the video. I can't find it right now, but I think it was like, let me see, let me find it, because I, I sent it to someone. Oh, here it is. The blog that it's on, it's called Tuko, tuko.co.ke for Kenya. And the title is US Gay Travel Vlogger says he, wait, US Gay Travel Vlogger says he spent over 300,000 shillings living in Kenya. I'm shocked. Um, but the only part that annoyed me was the gay part. Like, eh. I just feel like my sexuality has nothing to do with what this article is about. It's literally about my monthly expenses in Kenya. Why they felt the need to add my sexuality into that, I get it. It was definitely clickbait, but 
It's a little annoying, just a little annoying, but I really don't mind. I just feel like, dang, people are really writing articles about me now. Like, okay, we are, we're doing something right. <laughs> That's really how I feel. But I did read the comments and oh my God, people were just like coming for me in the comments. Someone said, how much do you earn per month? Honestly, it changes every month. So because I work for myself, I'm not getting like, you know, a bi-weekly paycheck. So with real estate, everything's commission-based and YouTube, yeah, we get paid every month, but it fluctuates every month. So it really depends on a lot of factors with YouTube. Some months I can get paid, what, almost 5K for my AdSense. I've had months where I made only 2K for AdSense. And I've also had months where I made like $200 for AdSense. But it really depends on how many videos I'm putting out that month, the type of videos I'm putting out that month, the location of my audience that are watching those videos too. So it's a lot of different factors. So it changes every month, honestly. Someone asked, was real estate what you wanted to do? And are you content? with where you are now. Yeah, so that's a two-part question. So growing up, I always said I was gonna be a real estate broker. I knew that even after high school, I think a year after high school, I told my mom, I was like, mom, I wanna be a real estate broker. And she heard me say this for years, so she gave me $500. She's like, look, I'm giving you this $500. You gotta pass this test, if not, like, I'm not giving this to you again. <laughs> so I was in real estate school. I studied my butt off for like six weeks straight. I remember having that big ass textbook with me everywhere I went. I'm at the gym just like highlighting things. I'm in the grocery store highlighting. Like I was just always studying. So six weeks after I started the course, it was time to take the like the, the school exam, which I passed. And then that gave you like the golden ticket to take the state exam. I passed that as well. So after that, technically, I was a licensed real estate broker. Um, I got my license young. I got my license at 19. <laughs> so after I got my license, I was like, okay, what do I do with this now? So I went back to um, college, I think the following year. Did that for like two years. But I remember being in college and I'm like, why am I here learning about rocks in the different types of clouds? Like I have no interest for this. And I was like, I'm ready to start making money. So some people don't know, but I actually dropped out of university and started working in real estate very young. And I have no regrets. Like I have no regrets, you know? Like I feel like everything I have done has led me to where I am now. So in 2020, you know, the world was shut down. I, I was still selling homes from my apartment in Charlotte, you know, because we were not able to like meet up with people. Like it just wasn't like a lot of face-to-face -face interactions. But I remember I was still selling homes from my bed and it clicked for me like, bro, I don't really necessarily have to be here in order to make money, earn an income and sell these homes. So I remember I started coming up with a plan. That was in July, 2020. By January, 2021, I sold everything, told my family I was leaving, spent the last day with my boyfriend at that time, and I was like, I am leaving, I'm going to Mexico. So, and I honestly, I only went to Mexico just to like, as like a trial and error, if I could really do like the whole digital nomad thing, traveling full time, because my plan all along was to come to Africa. I wanted to explore Africa, but because I'm from the US and Mexico is like next door, I was like, let me just try out Mexico for a couple months. Uh, see if I can do this before going across the world. So I did five months in Mexico, had a cool time. I was still selling homes, still making money. So I believe in July of 2021, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take the leap. I'm going to South Africa. <laughs> and I did, I have no regrets. And honestly, as far as like YouTube and content creating, like things have not been the same since. My first month in South Africa, uh, I think I landed like July 23rd. By the end of August, first I had like 25,000 new subscribers. So that was crazy, crazy. Things have just been slowly going up since then. Uh, but am I content? No. I'm one of those people, once I set a goal, once I accomplish that goal, I'm ready for the next thing. So I'm like that with everything, even in real estate, um, to the point where now real estate doesn't really excite me anymore, if I'm being completely honest. I think like doing residential real estate now, like selling homes, it doesn't really excite me anymore. I've been doing it for so long, it's just kind of like the same process, you know? My buyer tells me they're interested, I send them to like the bank, the bank gets them approved, I send them houses, there's an agent back home that shows them the properties. Once they like it, I write up the offer. If the offer is accepted, I have a transaction coordinator, 
basically like an assistant who handles the entire transaction up until the day that they get their keys, I get paid, boom, 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 move on to the next one. That was literally the process, if I'm being real. Um, of course, you know, things can vary and change from client to client, but yeah, that's the same, like it's pretty much the same process. So with that, I'm ready to, I'm ready to do more in real estate as far as like maybe development, commercial, getting into more investing, things like that. So yeah someone asked do you feel like south africa could be a safe utopia for queer black americans hmm i think my first thought is no um and i say that to say i don't think there is like a utopia for gay people anywhere in the world like anywhere we go there are going to be people who just don't understand us don't like us don't want to get to like us so i don't think there is a utopia for for the queer community i think you just have to find like your safe space, your safe haven in any country, any place you're at. You have to find your own community that makes you feel safe. I also think everyone has a different experience. Like the guy that I'm kind of talking to, he's a very masculine presenting man. And we were saying like when he travels or when he does things like people don't really bother him because he's just so big. Like, versus someone who's more like feminine presenting and more flamboyant. I feel like people, especially men sometimes, would be more prone to like bother that person. So, I mean, it's a personal thing, but I don't think there's a queer utopia anywhere in the world. Anywhere you go, there are still dangers that you should be aware of, you know? Someone said, where'd you get all that ass from? From my mom, period. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever see yourself permanently settling in Africa? I mean, so honestly, I want to be like a global citizen. I want to have multiple citizenships um, and properties all over the world. So at some point I can like travel the world with my husband and my kids and we're just, you know, living our best life. Do I want to have like residency and property in Africa? Absolutely. But do I want to stay here forever? I don't think I want to stay anywhere forever. I don't know, that could change as I get older. But right now, I just kind of like bouncing around, living in different countries, getting different vibes, different experiences. Maybe when I get older, I'll be ready to sit down, but I definitely want to have property in Africa um, so that I can come in and out whenever I want to, you know? Let's see, what else? Have you ever thought of buying a house here in South Africa? We love you here and I love you back, baby. Absolutely. The plan is to eventually buy like a new development, one or two bedroom, so I can put it on Airbnb and rent it out for moments that I'm not here. So I definitely want to do that. I keep saying every week I'm going to talk to, I don't know, a real estate developer about like what the process is like for foreigners, but I have yet to do that. But I do plan on doing that at some point. Would you consider going to Nigeria and visiting Nollywood? Absolutely. I want to go to Lagos so bad. I keep having this vision of me waking up in this stunning house on Victoria Island. I look out the window and I just see the water and the boat on the water. Like, I want that. I want that so bad. So I'm gonna make that happen. What app or software do you use to edit? Guys, honestly, right now, all I'm using is my MacBook Air and iMovie. I use other websites that are compatible with iMovie, but the actual like editing like platform I'm using is just iMovie. So let me know. I see a lot of those questions. So let me know if you guys want me to make like, um how to edit videos, like one-on-one, -on -one, beginner's edition type of video. Um, Cause I feel like over the past year and a half, I have definitely learned a thing or two about editing, you know? Someone said, how do you cope with the haters who come to your DM? Um, I mean, honestly, I don't really get that many haters. I don't even know, when's the last time I had someone like come to my actual DMs on some hate? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. It's mainly, you know, subscribers from YouTube or like men, uh, if I'm being real, <laughs> is men. But I have gotten like hate comments on YouTube and that stuff doesn't really bother me. It's usually just like comments about my sexuality and they don't agree with that. But guys, I'm a very, very secure person. So I don't, I just don't think that can really like fluster me. Like the only bad thing, it, the only bad thing like you can say about me in your head is that I'm gay, like that I'm queer, but my sexuality is just like, Babe, you really can't find anything else to talk about. Like that's not even, for me, that's not an insult. It's just a fact. So yeah, things like that do not bother me. I just kind of laugh about it. I'm very, very secure, very comfortable with who I am, my sexuality. Like you cannot make me feel bad about being gay. Like, baby, I'm literally living my best life. <laughs> 
So I just don't see being gay as something I should be ashamed about. Like, no. I think it also has to do with my upbringing. Like I have a supportive family. My mom always, she was supportive and always taught me like just because you're gay, like that isn't really a lifestyle. It's just really who you decide to love. So I always go into that. Like I always think about that, even with my content guys. I don't really talk about being queer that much because like, what is there really to talk about? It's just like, I'm living my life. I, I'm a queer man, so I don't really need to talk about it. Like, I'm showing you. You'll see my life as a queer guy through my actions, like, but I don't think it's a lifestyle. Like, I do the same thing that you guys do. I eat, I sleep, I work, and I just be that bitch, period. Someone says, do you have a BBL? <laughs> the answer to that is absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't have a BBL, guys. Not everything is natural, you know. Um, are you dating anyone in South Africa? Um, I've been on dates, but am I with anyone? No. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I feel like before I came, I had this, this fantasy of like, oh, I'm gonna come to Africa and just meet like a rich African man that's just, that's, that's wholesome and genuine and just wants to just love me. Just I had this whole fantasy of before, I had this whole fantasy of what I thought like dating an African man would be like. And baby, it has been probably the complete opposite. It's been the complete opposite. I feel like dating has been a challenge. It's just different, you know? But it makes sense. Like I'm in an entirely, I'm in an entirely different culture. Um, so I'm still trying to like navigate through that. So there are just a lot of differences and a lot of like head butting I've had with men with dating. Um, yeah, it, it's just been interesting. I feel like dating over here, dating, I don't know, a lot of experiences I've had here in South Africa, Rwanda and Kenya. I don't know, it seems like a lot of things just seem to be very transactional with these men and I just, I don't like that. I don't like that I'm not used to that, but I'm also like, okay, I'm in a new place, so I have to adapt. Experience, I just come from experiences <laughs> with men back in the US where it's like, if a man wants to see me, he literally texts me and is like, what's your, what's your flight info? What's your flight info? I wanna see you, I'm flying you out. Boom, 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 boom. Here, it's just so different. Like the guy, it'd be a guy who initiates interest in me. We exchange numbers, he's like, I wanna see you, let's hang out, let's have, let's hang out, let's get to know each other. I'm like, okay, cool. The day that we're supposed to meet, he'll text me like, send me an Uber. And I'm like, what? He's like, send me an Uber so I can come see you. And I'm like, why do I have to pay for your Uber? Like, sir, you approached me. Like, you want to see me. Like, why would I pay for your Uber? Especially in East Africa, I noticed the men, in my experience, I remember guys, I can't talk for everyone, but I remember in East Africa, in Rwanda, and in Kenya, the guys were like, well, if you want to, if you want to see me, you need to pay for my Uber. You need to pay for my transport. And it was just the delivery for me that was kind of off. Like, I don't like being told what to do. I'm a very like free spirit. So if you're telling me I need to do this, I'm probably not gonna do it just out of rebellion. So it's just, I, I don't know. I just don't think I'm good at dating. Cause even here in South Africa, I have dated some very successful men, some powerful type of men. I have dated those type of men too. And it's just, another clash. Um, I don't know, I just keep clashing with these men. You know, I just feel like men here, like, I don't know, I was dating this this rich, I'm not gonna say, I was dating this guy, he was very well off. And I remember he came over and I don't cook, as you guys know. So I order food, but I plated the food for him and I like, I even serve him the food. Like, I just don't do stuff like that. I serve him the food, he eats the food. So after he finishes eating, he sits the plate on the ground, on the floor, and he like goes to the bedroom. He's like, okay, I'm gonna go sleep now. And I'm looking at him like, aren't you gonna like go put the, the, the plate in the kitchen? And he's like, no, I know you're gonna pick it up for me. So why would I do it? <laughs> I was like, uh, this man, this man got me, uh, sir, you need to leave. And he's like, what? He said, you need to leave. He's like, it's, it's 11 at night. I'm like, I don't care if it was 2 a.m. You need to get out of my house. You don't respect me as another man, and this just isn't gonna work. So I feel like a lot of men that I have met here are already in like open relationships. They're like really into like the polyamorous lifestyle, which I'm not knocking. That's just not something that I want for myself. Like I'm very much into like monogamy. So 
Like, yeah, like I'll go on three, four dates with a guy. Then he tells me like, oh yeah, I have a boyfriend. He's just in Durban at the moment. And I'm like, what? Like you should have told me this before I even agreed to meet. So things like that. So it's been a challenge. But one thing I have learned with traveling that men have the same intent. It may just be a different continent. That's my rhyme for the day. But no, nah, that's really true. It doesn't matter if you're North America, South America, Africa, like men are men, baby. Just a different continent, honestly. That's one thing I have learned. Uh, someone asked me, what is my skincare routine? I'm gonna make a video dedicated just to my skincare routine because I get a lot of questions about that. So stick around, that is definitely coming soon. Someone asked, any advice for someone wanting to start a YouTube channel? Um, I also wanna make a video on this, like how to start a YouTube channel, what you need to start a YouTube channel. But I don't know, I think my biggest piece of advice is to just start recording.